So, my name is Mihai Wagner. I'm a software engineer at Collabora, and I'm going to talk today about LibreOffice Online, the client development. So, LibreOffice Online consists mainly consists of two parts: the server side and the client. And of course, LibreOffice. And uh, on the client, we have Leaflet, an open source JavaScript library, and JavaScript as the main language to code in. So this is how Leaflet usually looks like. Looks like. Uh, many of you might be familiar with OpenStreetMap. And um, Leaflet is actually used by a lot of big companies. And um, they've uh, soon released a uh, 1.0 version of Leaflet. We're currently using some 0.7 or so. Uh, so we had to make some changes in uh, in Leaflet. Mainly, we've um, added WebSocket communication um, to send and receive commands from the server, and also to um, get the tiles from the server instead of uh, having a new URL for the images. Uh, so we are also caching more. Uh, for example, when zooming, uh, they used to remove the old layer of tiles and no longer do that. And uh, some newer versions of Leaflet also uh, discarded tiles once they got out of the viewing area. Uh, so these are the steps to load a document. Um, so we needed a, a different uh, coordinate system, uh, a different from the one that is normally used for, for viewing the Earth, because the Earth is round and we needed a, a flat surface. Uh, luckily, Leaflet already had this implemented, mainly for uh, for maps in different games, and um, we use that. Uh, so the tile at the very top left is the tile with the coordinate zero zero, and <coughs> the uh, x axis goes from left to right and the y axis from top to bottom. And images are requested from the server based on the coordinates, so each tile of 256 by 256 pixels represents uh, a single tile of a specific coordinate. So the server sends uh, binary images, and those images are transformed in data URIs, uh, with which uh, normal images are constructed. So this is an example of a, a simple image, a red dot, and uh, that's you know, a cool example of how to, uh, to create it. And uh, this is what uh, the document looks like in the browser. Uh, all of those are images, and the, that uh, blue rectangle is actually an image. And um, yeah, you can see the actual uh, HTML code. So we've um, we've tried to cache a, a lot as we could. Uh, a lot, as much as we could, uh, because this improved the the user experience when scrolling and zooming. For example, we do prefetch tiles outside of the viewing area after a time of user inactivity, uh, because we do not want to burden the server with uh, tiles that are not visible while the user might be editing. So after a few seconds of inactivity, we we start to, to load tiles outside of the viewing area in an increasing border. Um, and we, we 
also can prefetch styles from other parts, for, uh, for example, in Impress or Calc uh, uh, page is is just uh, so. This is just a slide, and you can uh, you can actually prefetch anything around it because that's all of it there. So we we prefetch other parts, so the part changing is a bit smoother. So we've added a scroll API based on the already existing timing methods. Um, we did this because uh, every document needs scroll bars because that's the natural way to navigate uh, a document. And um, custom scroll bars can be easily added to the existing implementation. Um, we also kept the mouse timing, so you can uh, actually scroll with the mouse and move the document around without moving things in the documents and without selecting anything. Uh, selections <coughs> are implemented as an SVG overlay. They are independent of the tiles, so. It so the tiles underneath do not require to be repainted. And um, actually selection works uh, really, really well because there, the message that is sent from the client to the server and back is quite small. So, so we can send a lot of messages in a short time. So we're actually tracking the user, user movement and we get the nice feedback. We also have selection handles for uh, shrinking or enlarging the selections. Those are very handy on mobile devices and also in the browser. Why not? So this is the typical scenario. We record keystrokes, we send them to the server. The server tells the client that some tiles are no longer valid. The, um, client requests those new tiles and once they are re-rendered and they arrive on the client they are they replace the old tiles. Uh, so it was a bit tricky to capture it, uh, the keystrokes. Um, so we actually have a hidden text area in which the user types and we we capture the events. And uh, we have some we had some compatibility issues because uh, keyboards events keyboard events were different across browsers, so some keys need to be uh, treated uh, <coughs> differently. Uh, for example, uh, the tab key would change focus uh, in in Chrome, but in Mozilla would, would do not, nothing and, and so on. Also the backspace, the backspace would cause the, the page to, the, the web page to go back. Uh, images can be selected and moved and resized. Uh, this, is the, this is how an image selection looks like. It's similar for shapes and other objects. Uh, copying. Um, so we we need the clipboard event to actually access the the user's clipboard, uh, and due to security reasons, uh, access to the user clipboard is very restricted. Um, so we cannot initiate ourselves uh, a clipboard event. We must wait for the user to press Ctrl C or uh, what is it, and um, and we must modify the data inside that event so that the user gets what he had selected, and that event must be handled synchronously because. I assume, due to security reasons as well, um, uh, it will somehow expire and the clipboard gets 
gets detached from the event. So we actually need to get the selection, selection content on the client before the user presses uh, Ctrl C. And we do that by um, quickly requesting the selection content after the user selects something. So about 100 milliseconds after no activity, we get the selection content and uh, it will be there when the event arrives. So there is ongoing work for keyboard API. Uh, the current status is a is the working draft, and um, there are some hacks to actually uh, have access to the user keyboard. Uh, there is a the zero copy library, which is, is a hidden flash movie. <coughs> And when the user uh, clicks on a button or clicks on the or some in something or in the context menu, some the data gets copied to his keyboard. But this also requires user interaction, so uh, so it's still not perfect. And also, Flash is going to be deprecated pretty soon, so it's not it's not the way to go. And um, also there is uh, little support, unfortunately, for RTF formatting. So we can, we, we now only can offer plain text or HTML uh, formatting for the selection content. So we have methods of uh, interact methods which 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 the user can interact with the toolbar. Um, developers can very easily plug in uh, their own toolbar and modify the existing one. Um, so the document can actually be viewed without any toolbar. It's just a just an error in the browser. Uh, where we can pan the document and edit and so on. So this is what the toolbar looks like in the cloud suit um, uh, toolbar. Uh, so we have the most common buttons like bold italics and so on, paragraph alignment. Uh, we can select fonts, styles and font sizes. We also have buttons for zooming in and out and changing the page. This is what the, the font selection looks like. We also have a search bar. We can search backwards or forwards. And some features that I want to say that most of the toolbar buttons work through EUNO you know, commands like bold and so on, but we also have some some of our own methods like go to page and or go to part enable editing. Um, there's a button next to next to searching to the left which enables editing, and when disabled the user can pan the document and interact with it like you would do with a map. And while in uh, viewing mode, the user can also enable selection for a short time, if needed, to select text with the mouse. We also have previews for uh, presentation uh, documents, and those previews have uh, those previews are updated, so when the document, I mean, on, when the slide is edited, the previews will also get an update after after one second. We did this uh, not to load the server too much with uh, with repainting the whole slide for a small preview. So regarding testing. Uh, it can be made automatically. 
we use uh, the Mocha framework, which is a JavaScript testing framework. Uh, Leaflet was already using this, so we've extended their unit tests. And we can also replay an editing session uh, to get the average loading times uh, of the tiles, the maximum and the minimum loading times. Uh, this, is the, this is a test output which can be run in the browser. And uh, an alternative would be to use the PhantomJS library, which actually have, has uh, a known uh, WebKit, WebKit implementation. But unfortunately, they have some old WebSocket implementation that doesn't work with our server. But they, they promise to have to, to implement some other WebSockets. And as soon as they do that, we'll probably switch to that. And this will give, give us a, a more automated test. So we no longer need to run into the browser. And uh, the idea is that uh, to let the browser, uh, I mean to let Leaflet decide which tiles to, to request from the server and to actually take into account the time to load the tiles. And without the browser, uh, we will have to manually request tiles and it, it's not, exactly uh, uh, desired to uh, to do it this way because we want to emulate an actual editing session and an actual interaction with the document. <coughs> so about performance, uh, the average loading time is quite good. It's below 100 milliseconds, which uh, which is actually very smooth, you, you can't see the light. And um, we're still working on improving it. Uh, I know that binary images take longer to load in the browser and we might uh, somehow overcome this problem uh, by loading them in another way. Uh, this is yet to be tested and uh, we hope to, to have an improvement there. So I have two demos for you. Uh, this is uh, how you can pan the document. You can also scroll. Going to the next page and back. This is selection enabled in viewing mode. You can also zoom in. I just go to the next to the next page if you select the first page and move it up first. Sorry? If you, if you want to take the beginning of the selection and then uh, move upwards. It works. Take up, does it then scroll to the previous page? Uh, yes, I think so. You, you can move shapes around. Uh, you can resize them. <coughs> you can edit the text in the shapes. Searching in shapes also works. So this is how editing usually looks like. As you can see, it works pretty well. Uh, you can see when you're typing and what you're typing with no delay. You can switch the selection handles and the cursor moves with the end selection handle.
searching. Changing the font. Numbering. So we have my table with a lot of fonts, and as you can see, we have uh, a feedback of the current font. Uh, selection with shift. And the arrows also works. This is a nice spreadsheet. You can zoom in and out. And we're now going to have a an updated preview of the slide of the